coming up on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. We're going to talk about six edible plants that you can grow in your summer garden, starting from seed, that are extremely easy to grow. We're also going to talk about four tips on planting your tomatoes so you have a better harvest come this fall. We're also going to have guest Mike Novak. He's a veteran garden radio show host with 20 years of experience and author from Chicago, Illinois as well as your garden questions and our garden answers. So tell your garden buddies that Garden Radio is back on the airways in Milwaukee because it all starts right now. You're tuned in to the only vegetable gardening radio show in Milwaukee with your host, Joey Baird, who grew up in the country but now lives closer to the city, and Holly Baird, who has always been a city girl. Combined, they have over 25 years of gardening experience who believe in simple gardening practices. A gardener for all gardeners founders of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, where they created over 800 how-to garden videos to teach others how to grow more of what they eat. Join them for the next hour as they discuss vegetable gardening and more. Ah, it is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener on 860 AM WNOV and W293CX 106.5. Wherever you may be listening, however you may be listening, whether through those particular stations or the simple radio app, the TuneIn app, the social, the radio tab on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Facebook, uh, garden page, dot com page, or social media, anywhere in between. I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, best friend, gardening partner, and co-host, Holly Baird. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com is your destination for all things gardening. Eight hundred and fifty some odd videos, short, long format, all to help you all for free, as well as a bunch of other other stuff, uh, past, uh, past replays, podcasts, and video in studio videos of the radio program and digital magazines all for you. Well, this program is brought to you each week by the great sponsors, the great companies you hear throughout the show. Nasala Kombucha is the executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. Nasala is made in Wisconsin with local tea and natural herbs. Look for it in the refrigerator aisle at your local grocer. If you don't see it, ask for it because if it's not Nasala Kombucha, it's not Kombucha. Find more information at nasala.com. And we also have the Ivy Organic Hotline. You can call in any time with your questions uh, regarding gardening or anything. Ivy Organic Hotline is 414-444-5250. Ivy Organic 3-in-1 Plant Garden naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents. Protects newly installed plants and trees. Shields prune and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit, and nut trees. Ornamental trees and shrubs. The product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivyorganics.com. Works very well. We used it last week on our dwarf cherry bush tree is what they call it. Uh, we have, uh, and the other ways in which you can contact us throughout the show or throughout your regular gardening activities outside during the week is you can email us at twvgradio at gmail.com. You can also tweet us on Twitter. Just use hashtag twvg. We had a great turnout this week, m- Monday, Tuesday at West Allis, where we talked about maximizing your garden. Hello to those new listeners uh, in West Allis, as well as Thursday at Wabatosa. Right. Uh, happy to have you along. Had a great turnout there. we got two more talks this coming week to conclude our spring speaking series. Now, if you have a garden group club or organization that you would like us to speak at, you can certainly contact us through the radio uh, on our, our, fa- our website under the speaking request tab. Or you can send us an email at twvgradio at gmail.com. If you want to attend one of our last two spring talks, you can come see us at the Cudahy Public Library at 7 o'clock this Tuesday for Maximizing Your Garden Space. And we'll wrap the whole thing up this Thursday at Blue Mills, the official garden center of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show at 6 o'clock where we'll be talking about straw bale gardening. But that's not – now that's it for the spring yeah. pretty much. And then come summer and fall, we do have more talks. Yeah, we've still got another 12 talks to come. Uh, in addition, there might be more that, that come up based on if you want us to talk at your gathering. So keep that in mind. We hope to see you out at Blue Mills. We hope to see you out at Cudahy Public Library. Well, we've got a lot of things to cover today, and we, we want to encourage individuals who may be questionable about whether I should garden, whether I can garden, whether it's easy, whether it's not easy, to make it easy because it is easy. A lot of times we complicate things to a point where it, we talk ourselves out of it. So we're going to go over six vegetables in which you can plant in your summertime garden 
that is very easy to do. You can start them from seed, and you can get all your seeds from migardener.com. They still have, we checked last night, they still have a variety of, of these seeds of some form or fashion for 99 cents a pack. And we ordered a couple of weeks ago from them, and within six days we had them. Uh, and probably a little quicker turnaround now because it's a little later in the season. So let's talk about one of the easiest, easiest ones you can grow is, is beans. Yeah, beans are extremely easy to grow. You don't have to start the seeds. You don't have, you just put the seeds directly in the ground. Now, we, we were talking about edible pod beans, the green beans, the, the purple pod beans, the yellow wax beans that are all edible, not the hard shell beans that you let dry on the vine. Those are easy too, but we're speaking about the edible pod beans. So if you don't want to have pole beans, which are the beans that vine out, you can also plant bush beans, which are little little bushes of beans. And you usually get, if you get your seeds from my gardener, you get 25 seeds for 99 cents. And how long do they take to grow, Joey? They take 40 to 60 days to reach a mature state where the pods begin to form. The bush beans here, they'll produce for about two to three weeks, and that's their life cycle. It's pretty much over. So if you're wanting to plant um, uh, plant these throughout the season, you want to stagger them or succession plant every 10 days, you would plant another row. Now, pole beans, on the other hand, is more beneficial to us in our garden because we grow them vertically. They vine up. They grab on. They're just like cucumbers. They hold on to the, the trellis, the fence, the string, whatever. They take about 70 days to reach a mature state. But they produce all the way up to frost, all the way up to the, they, the, till the frost kills them. The only disadvantage you have to the pole beans is the rust. There is, we have had this a couple of years, it's an airborne, what is, what is it, a par, uh, the pathogen. pathogen that gets onto your plants and basically smothers them out. It, it, it's rust. It's called bean rust. And it's, you put your hand, once you know that you have it, you can put your finger down the, the leaf and it actually is... You pull it off, and it looks like you've touched, touched a piece of metal, rusted metal. Right. You don't want to eat those beans. You don't want to compost those plants. You want to just throw them in the trash. You don't even want to burn them because that can get back up in the air and, and cause problems. It, does, it doesn't happen a lot. No, it's it doesn't. Very it late it in the season. Very late in the right. season. And big ag industry uh, farmers will have this occasionally occur in their bean fields as well. It's the same. So the, the same one thing, thing I want to say, though, is that your bean trellis does not need to be complicated. No. You could start. You could take something like a dowel, put it on some fence posts. What are those called? T posts. T posts. Thank you. Or just or just cut limbs from the tree and jam them in the ground and wrap uh, outdoor twine around them and let them grow up. That doesn't right. have to be. You can uh, keep it pretty simple. Yeah, it doesn't have to be expensive or really it doesn't even have to be pretty if you don't care. As long as it allows the plants to grow vertically, works very well. We use the bottom of baby cribs. Works really well. Uh, we use, there's a mesh netting that you can, a nylon netting in which you can get. Uh, you can actually just create a TP type of situation with three, tr- three uh, trees or three limbs into a TP and wrap string around that and let them crawl up. Works very well. Another one is cucumbers. Now, we grow nine varieties of cucumbers uh, from the little munching cucumbers to white cucumbers to yard long, actually 36 inch long cucumbers. Mm-hmm. We won't get into too much in depth on the cucumbers because next week's second segment we're going to tear into all the information you need to know about cucumbers. But essentially you can get them, uh, plant them when the soil is about 60 degrees uh, Memorial Day weekend. Maybe uh, we planted them throughout the summer. It doesn't have to be a specific time. They'll take 55 to 70 days to reach maturity. You can grow them on the vine uh, trellis uh, that they crawl up or on the ground. And uh, if you buy them at MI Gardener, 10, 50, uh, 10 to 50 seeds based on the variety. He's got some very rare varieties as well. It's just a common, ordinary uh, picking, pickling and One thing and to keep in them. mind, and we, we get this question a lot, is people will say, my, you know, my cucumbers die off at the end of August, early September. That's just how cucumbers are. They're not, they're not one of these plants that's going to continue to grow into the It's a life frost. cycle. Yeah, it's a life cycle. So their life cycle is, is fairly short. Once they produce, they're going to produce until they're done, pretty much. And that usually, for for most cucumbers, is going to be end of August, early September. Now, if you really want to prolong the life of your cucumbers, you plant them normal. We plant ours Memorial Day weekend. And you can wait another three or four weeks and plant another batch. So as one gets done, the other one's still going. Depends on how many cucumbers or how yeah, many pickles can, or whatever you, you want to do. You can definitely do some succession planting. Right. Those. If you really enjoy cucumbers, you want to keep them going. But we'll get way in depth in that next week, second right. segment, all the details you need to know. So another simple and fun thing to grow, and you probably don't, not, not a lot of people even think about this, but they use 
use them is herbs. And you can grow this in your summer garden, but you can also grow it inside your home. Right. And the good thing about herbs is if you have a shady spot in your yard, herbs like partial shade. So you can grow if four or five four hours. Or five, of, yeah, yeah, four to six hours of sunlight. And you're good to go. Uh, and and there's like you name it, cilantro, dill, t- uh, umpteen different types of basil. Throw the seeds in. They'll take about 90 days to reach maturity, but they will be very prolific. They will. They you will literally with two plants have more basil than you know what you would want to do with it uh, when it comes to that. What's the next thing on our list, Holly? Carrots. So carrots are easy to grow. You just put the seeds right in the ground. We, ch- we choose to grow them in containers because we have a little bit of difficulty growing them in the ground. They like really loose and loamy soil, so you want to make sure you put them in the ground. They take about 70 days to grow, and you'll have some nice carrots. And it really depends on what color carrots you want, purple, blue, green, uh, yellow, white, orange, whatever, red. But again, <clears throat> you want loose soil so they can penetrate down. If you don't have loose soil, you can grow them, like you said, in a container. We've also taken five-gallon buckets, cut the bottom off of it, filled it with compost, and planted them and in that. And we got some 18-inch long carrots. Yeah, very, very big carrots. Again, with any of these, goes without saying, you got to keep the water to them. You got to water regularly. Makes sense. Uh, you, you think you would remember, but you got to keep that in mind. So another thing is what everybody hates to see by the end of, let's say, early August, mid-August, is the neighbors continually bringing over zucchini. Right. Very easy crop to grow. Uh, the joke is uh, in the southern area of the United States, uh, people will lock their doors on their car. They'll lock their front doors. They won't answer when the neighbor comes over because they continue to bring more zucchini because they're so prolific. And that is the case for most, most situations. There are some diseases in which you may have later on in the season, but for the general overall understanding, these things will produce as long as you continue to harvest here, ladies and gentlemen. You got to harvest all these fruits on a regular basis. Otherwise, the plant will put on one fruit, very large, have mature seeds, in, and they'll shut down because that's their goal in life is to reproduce for seed for the next generation, not to feed us. So, by continually harvesting at a regular rate, they will be ready to continue to per, to, to go until frost kills them or disease kills them. Uh, right. They take 50 to 70 days, uh, zucchini does, and you can get yellow zucchini, green zucchini, dark green zucchini, striped zucchini, uh, hook, uh, hooked zucchini, whatever you want. Uh, you've got a variety of to choose from there. And zucchini, ha- you, there's a lot of things you can do with zucchini. Oh, we're, so. we're coming up in July. We're going to have a whole segment on all the things you can do with zucchini, right. from making pies to, to turn it into fake pineapple, the whole thing. So right. that, that's coming up, as well as uh, your favorite. Yeah, definitely. Sunflowers are, now you might not consider an edible. You can save the seeds if you get them before the birds get them. And they take about 90 days. We plant them when we plant our tomatoes. In amongst yeah. the tomatoes. We just put them next to, put some seeds within the tomatoes, and they come up, and they're simple to grow, and you have nice sunflowers in your and, yard. And you have a variety. It's not just one type of sunflower. There's mammoth sunflowers that, in the right conditions, can get ahead on them that the actual flower can be 12 to 14 inches across and it can grow up to 15 foot tall. You can also get dwarf variety uh, sunflowers that will get 16, 18 inches tall, put on a little flower that's maybe two or three inches in diameter. So a variety of different uh, yellow, red, black sunflowers. It's just not the traditional old sunflower that you think. So that's something you want to keep in mind. Um, when it comes to growing. And two honorable mentions here that are sort of summer crops that are sort of not summer crops is garlic. We plant garlic, and we'll talk about that on the show in late August. We plant it the first Saturday in October. You harvest it late June, early July. Peas, we plant very early in the spring, harvest them around the 4th of July, and you can plant them again the 4th of July weekend or around that time, and get a fall harvest. They take about 70 days to reach maturity. So we hope that inspires you to consider growing some of these things in your summer garden from seed. You don't have to buy starch. You don't have to mess around with it, anything like that. Uh, when it comes to seed starting, now the garlic, you can start from the actual clove. You don't have a seed that you have to mess with when it comes to that. So beans, cucumbers, herbs, carrots, zucchini, summer squash, and sunflowers are all wonderful plants in which you can start from a seed in your summer garden when the soil warms up around the Memorial Day weekend here in Zone 5 in the Milwaukee area. When we come back, one of the most prevalent and popular crops that you will, most people will grow in their garden, we're going to give you four tips on how to plant your tomatoes so you have a 
best the best harvest possible come August, right after this. Have a gardening question? Email Joey and Holly at twvgradio at gmail.com. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants, to multiple-gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. Do you have a little space to grow? Check out Greenstock Vertical Gardens at GreenstockGarden.com. Greenstock is engineered to grow with its innovative space and water-saving design. You can grow vegetables, flowers, herbs, and even strawberries in just two square feet of space. Grow up instead of out. Perfect for the porch, patio, or deck. Grow up to 30 plants in a small space. GreenstockGarden.com has everything you need to grow in the littlest of spaces. Proudly made in the USA. For more information and to purchase, visit GreenstockGarden.com. Beans and Barley Market and Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the east side and greater Milwaukee area, where you can find all you need, from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners, from wine to fresh squeezed carrot juice, a health food store with hundreds of products, vitamin supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cards, books, and a knowledgeable staff. Catering available, open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good, healthy, homemade food, including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties. 1901 East North Avenue, Milwaukee, 414 and online at beansandbarley.com. Really Granola is a small batch Wisconsin-made granola available at reallygranola.com. This granola uses many organic ingredients and features Wisconsin products such as beautiful red Wisconsin cranberries, local honey, and other delicious Wisconsin products. You'll find plenty of fiber and protein in Really Granola, which makes it a great way to start or end your day. This granola is baked in a Wisconsin co-packing kitchen that helps to employ disabled workers. Find Really Granola near you or to buy online, visit reallygranola.com. I want a garden center that listens to and understands my needs. I want to buy my gardening products from a local business with strong ties to the community. All I want is a garden center that truly values their customers. It seems like everyone is selling plants these days, but I'm having a hard time finding quality. I take pride in my garden, so I want my garden center to take pride in their products. Where will you be going for all of your gardening needs this season? Blue Mel's Garden Center. We are your answer. Blue Mel's 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. It is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, your destination for all things gardening, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, 850-some-odd videos, short, long format, all for you, all to help you. Well, before we get into growing tomatoes, we've got a question on the IVOrganics.com hotline. Caller, you're on the air. you have a question? Yes. I planted garlic about a week ago. Will it uh, come up this year, or do I have to wait like a whole year before uh, the crop produces? Uh, you're planting springtime garlic, which does grow, and you should get a, cons- a decent size head by late October, early November. It will grow this year. You started it from the actual clove, correct? Yes. Yeah. You'll be fine on that. Some people uh, encourage springtime garlic, which is perfectly fine. That's something that we have uh, have never done. We always focus on this, the fall garlic. But yeah, you'll plant it. Uh, you plant it a week ago. You will have garlic come this fall, and you'll be able to harvest it without any problems. Uh, are you planting er, uh, let's see, um, uh, heirloom or uh, hard neck or soft neck, or do you know? I don't know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> All you, I know is it's in the ground. I got it at Steins, but they had it marked down. Okay. Uh, you will know the difference whether it's hard neck. If it's hard neck, you're going to acquire a scape on it come late August, uh, early October, and you'll be able to remove that scape. It, it'll be a hook thing. They'll turn into a flower if you leave it be. If it's uh, soft neck, you're not going to have that scape. So uh, we'll talk more about that in, in the upcoming episodes. But, uh, yeah, you'll be fine. It will grow, and you'll be able to harvest it come this fall before the first freeze. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your call. 
Well, we also have fresh grow, uh, dro- uh, fresh peaches and blueberries going to be drove to the Milwaukee area in just a matter of a few weeks here from TreeRipe.com. If you like fresh produce delivered right to your neighborhood, you should check out Tree Ripe Citrus Company. You can find out where to pick up top quality produce from Tree ripe.com they have beautiful tasty peaches and juicy sweet blueberries if you're sick of bland mealy peaches and lackluster blueberries from your local grocer tree ripe has what you need they come right to a stop in your neighborhood fresh off the truck right from the source for location and schedules visit tree ripe.com they have locations all over including iowa upper and lower michigan minnesota illinois and right here in wisconsin tree ripe.com is your go-to for the freshest produce around and uh, you get a half bushel of peaches that are blemish free. Uh, there is instructions on how to deal with them before you use them. We usually freeze them. We'll also can them. Uh, as we get into talking about tomatoes, four tips in which uh, you need to follow in order to have successful tomatoes. You have a shout out from a listener from New York, don't you, from last week? Yes. Um, um, while we're doing that. Tomatoes, like 92% of all gardeners grow tomatoes. Now, whether in containers, uh, patio porch deck, in the ground, dwarf varieties, indeterminate, determinate varieties, uh, we're going to go through four steps, actually five, really, in order to ensure that your tomatoes do the best they possibly can because we usually harvest them around late sep- uh, late July, early August. Okay, so Charlie from New York, we appreciate you listening. I know you tune in, I think, pretty much every week, and you're always commenting and, and everything, so we're, we're glad to know that you are out there listening. It's not just a Milwaukee-based program. It is a garden program that has content that's relative, relevant to almost all places in the world through Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, our podcast replay, as well as our in-studio video replay that you can find all on the website. So four steps in which you need to plant your tomatoes to get the best success because just like anything in life uh sowing gardening driving a car if you don't start out well it's not going to end well <laughs> driving a car driving if you don't start out well <laughs> if you can't get it out of the driveway that's, you're not going to go very far that's true so here's uh, we want to get the good start here because mo- we typically here in wisconsin the zone, zone 5a the milwaukee area Memorial Day weekends when we plant tomatoes. So yeah. I wanted to get a jump start on this so we have the information relevant and, and available before Memorial Day weekend comes. So four steps here. Okay, so many people don't realize that the depth of how you plant your tomatoes makes a difference. And tomatoes are part of the nightshade family, so they have the potential to put on roots on their whole entire stalk. So you want to plant them deep. You want to put about 75% of the stalk in the ground. You can remove the leaves from where you're planting. And you also want to remove the leaves around the base of the plant too. Then that's to prevent, you know, some disease and things like that. See, most of the time when we buy starts, we plant them at the same depth as which they were in the container. This is totally different. We go ahead and bury these suckers and you can dig a, a hole, make sure you have good loose soil in that hole, good and rich soil, and uh, make sure it's not clay or dense like that. Uh, you can, and you can dig it, you know, based on if you're, let's say your tomato is 10 inches tall. You want to bury it about seven inches in the ground. Right. And you just leave that little... And so because of that, because they have the potential to put on all those roots, you're going to... The t- tomato's going to be healthier. It's going to get more nutrients from the soil. It's just going to do better. And But with that being said, if you do purchase grafted tomatoes, you want to plant those differently. But we would recommend avoiding grafted tomatoes. They're just kind of a pain to grow. Here's the thing with the grafted tomatoes. They take the root stock of... Uh, there are special root stocks that are available that are very expensive that commercial growers will get. Grow the seed, cut the bottom inch... Uh, cut cut the top of the stalk off and leave an inch of stalk there. Then take a variety like a black cream or a cherry variety and graft it to that root stalk in order to get whatever characteristics in which they're looking for. They cost more, and you can't bury them deep because the above portion, which is that chosen variety that the grower has decided to put on that root stalk, will root, and the root stalk becomes doesn't work because the the over the top portion overtakes the bottom portion and you have uh, a very expensive tomato plant that doesn't serve the purpose you also we wouldn't recommend there's a variety now that's come across from europe it's called french fries and uh ketchup ketchup it is a tomato cherry variety on the top of the plant and then you underneath is a grafted potato plant which is really stupid because you really can't make ketchup very well out of cherry tomatoes right but it's one plant the tomatoes produce on the top and potatoes produce on the bottom. And these are very expensive plants, by the way. But how, it's a novelty, really. Somehow I doubt those people are making their own 
French fries and ketchup anyway. It, it's a sales thing. It's a sales thing. That's stupid. But yeah, we wouldn't recommend that at all. So we plant them deep in good, loose, and rich soil. Whether you're doing a container or a in the ground. But you and right. So you want to keep that in mind. So you want an all-purpose, well-balanced fertilizer. We like Sustain, and you can find that at Blue Mel's. Um, something we, under under we, ten ten ten. Under ten ten ten. We encourage organic. That's how we grow. But whatever works for you. And you want to make sure that at the time of planting, you you plant those, you, you include that, and we use granular because it has that slow release. Now, another thing, whether, you know, depends on where you're going to plant these tomatoes. If you're planting them in a container with minimal space, go with a compact variety. If you have, uh, like, let's say, a, a topsy-turvy, uh, a, a compact or maybe a cherry variety would work, but a compact variety only gets about two foot tall. There's really dwarf varieties. There's uh, grape varieties and little cherries that are like only get a foot tall but the compact variety is what we would recommend you can get a good amount of tomatoes off of those and then uh, indeterminate are vine ones that will grow indefinitely so if you have a lot of space that's what we grow majority of and they produce throughout the season Uh, the indeterminate will grow until frost kills them determinate will grow to a certain stage of height produce all their tomatoes in a two to three week period and they're done growing that's it really that's pretty much it so you want you want to plant in full sun, and I know that might seem obvious to a lot of people, but we'll get people that say, "I planted my tomatoes; they didn't do well." I did them under a tree, but I put them under a tree. Yeah. Well, that's that was your first mistake, and not everybody knows that. Not right. everybody realizes realize that. So when we say full sun, we're talking about at least eight hours of sun. You could squeeze six hours, but you're going to see a decrease in the production of your tomatoes. But so we ha- and we have the saying, which I'll, I've said several times, yep. is if you grow it for the fruit or the root, you want full sun. And if you grow it for the greens, it can tolerate the shade. Now, we want to talk about we've got the tomato planted. And you can go on our website and type in tomatoes, and we have dozens of videos on, on really in-depth, detailed on how to do this. We're just kind of gl- giving you a, a chunk here so you don't make mistakes that uh, will hurt you in the long run. We want to talk about diseases. 90% of the problems your tomato fa- plant will face are diseases that splash up on, that are in the soil that will splash up on your tomato leaves. So one thing we do is we mulch. We use dry grass clippings, shredded leaves, dry chemical-free grass clippings, shredded leaves from the fall. Uh, you can use straw. You could use shredded paper, something to put a barrier between the soil and the plant for a couple of reasons. One, if you protect the soil it's going to dry out slower it's not going to evaporate as quick because it's not exposed to the sunlight two it's going to suppress weeds if the sun can't get to the soil weeds don't grow very well and three to prevent that soil from splashing up on the actual plant of the tomato late uh, early blight is one of the most prevalent diseases in everybody's soil that affects your tomatoes most now if you're not sure what early blight is it's when you have the yellowing of the leaves consistently it starts it starts at the bottom of your plants and then it goes it just continues to grow up that plant throughout the season and then come end of august you have these sad looking plants with only tomatoes hanging off of them and in order to do to prevent that you add mulch and you add a handful of yellow whole grain cornmeal we recommend hotchins mills because they're a sponsor and apply one handful at the time of planting around the base. And it has a beneficial bacteria that fights that early blight in the soil. And since we've done that, we've reduced the effects of early blight by about 90%. And you also want to, throughout the season, continue to trim from ground level up the plant about eight inches. Just remove all the foliage around it and leave the stalks to give that air gap and prevent the soil from splashing up. So that's a brief summary so you can get better tomatoes uh, come August. So hopefully that helps. Again, you can always go and ask us more questions via email, Twitter, if uh, you catch us after the program. And also, it's going to rain today, but that means the grass is going to grow and we're going to have to mow grass. And if you have a good piece of equipment like Aaron's, you can do it a whole lot easier and a whole lot of more effective. Do you hear that? That's your neighbor shaking in their grass-stained shoes because Aaron's is about to help you set up your grass-cutting game. Your name is on the mailbox, so that Aaron's name should be on your mower. 
Heavy duty steel construction, smarter, smoother controls, professional cutting performance. The only thing we love more than the smell of freshly cut grass is the sweet taste of victory. Aaron's, it comes down to this. Visit Aaron's.com to find your local dealer for lawn and snow removal equipment. Been there the same zip code for over 80 years. It's American made. When we come back, our good friend from Chicago, Illinois, Mike Novak, will be with us from MikeNovak.net. He is a 20-year veteran of Garden and environmentally, Environmental Talk Radio right after this. Tweet Joey and Holly using hashtag TWVG. you say you say nasala kombucha it'll put some glide in your stride and some pep in your step nasala kombucha (laughs) yeah nasala kombucha makes your body Mycorrhizae is a beneficial fungus from PlantSuccess.com that will greatly increase your plant's germination, ability, and a healthier root structure. You can increase seed sprouting, root growth, and general plant germination. Mycorrhizae can be used with hydroponics, root cutting, seed sprouting, coca core, and soil. PlantSuccess.com carries powder, granule, and tablet forms of mycorrhizae. Increase the level of mycorrhizae in your soil for your plants to give them the optimal opportunity to produce an incredible harvest. For more information and to purchase, visit PlantSuccess.com. Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune. Just 99 cents at MIGardener.com. With over 300 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom and organic, flower, vegetable and herb seeds available year-round, pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to MIGardener.com for seeds and gardening needs, tools and special blend fertilizer. MIGardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. Mantis Plant Protection Professional Grade Organic Pest Control Solutions. They offer Mantis EC concentrated or ready to use sprays. Certified organic and environmentally friendly insect killer. Gentle on pollinators and other organisms, but effective in killing soft bodied insects and spider mites fast. Safe around your children and pets. They also have the cleanest and whitest diatomaceous earth on the market. Visit MantisPP.com to receive a free organic pesticide cheat sheet, which is a list of organic insecticides that are used effectively and kills insects fast. Visit mantispp.com to download it today. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Uh, it is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, your destination for all things gardening, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, 850 videos, and a whole lot more for free. We thank you for listening. If you're tuning in for the very first time, we hope you're enjoying the program. You can also ca- catch podcast replays on the website underneath the radio tab. Well, we were at Blue Mouse a couple weeks ago. Well, I went to Blue Mouse last week, and I was going to get you a... Uh, a supply, a, cli- a clementine indo- a, a tree, clementine mm-hmm. tree to, that we could grow indoors next to our dwarf lime tree, and I saw that they had bush dwarf variety cherry bush trees is what they call them. So I got that for you instead because you can get about thirty pounds of cherries off these versus a couple of clementines at Blue Mills. Very affordable price. I, I paid twenty four dollars for it, and it's a two year old plant. We'll get some this year. We'll get a whole lot next year, but Blue Mills, and we'll be there this Thursday. On the straw bale gardening as well, but they've got everything you need: flowers, vegetables, herbs, uh, fertilizer, land. And the, the people there know what they're talking about. Well, that's the, that's the benefit to yeah. the whole blue mouse thing. You just don't walk in and you get some kid going. Well, I don't know. I'll find Richard. Maybe he knows the answer. These people know the answer. They don't have to go find anybody. A lot right. of them are master gardeners. And if you haven't got all your garden needs, your landscape needs, your mulch, your compost, your sands. Uh, Blue Mills has all of it, and where is Blue Mills located at? Blue Mills is at 4930 West Loomis Road in Greenfield. They can supply and surpass all of your gardening needs. You can go to bluemills.com, or you can call 414 414- 
282-4220. And speaking of master gardeners, we have uh, Mike Novak. He spent the past 20 years talking about gardening, the environment, and green living on Chicago radio. He's also an author and columnist. Mike is an all-around advocate for gardening and being green. His radio show airs every Saturday from 10 to 11 a.m. and Sunday 9 to 11 a.m. on WCGO 1590 and can be heard live at MikeNovak.net. And that's N-O-W-A-K. Dot net and through the simple radio and tune in apps. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show, Mike Novak. Uh, I can't possibly live up to the hype, so uh, maybe we I should just hang up and you guys. Uh, <laughs> well, wait, you have a good day then. The <laughs> 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 well, we appreciate you taking time. I know you got the show coming up uh, in Chicago at the top of the hour. We thank you for taking time and spin, spending a few minutes with uh, us and our listeners. Are you kidding me? I love you guys. You guys are the best. Uh, and I'm so happy for you now that you've uh, got your uh, live radio show in uh, Wisconsin. That is just awesome. One, and, of, uh, one of our friends said it's real radio. <laughs> it is. It's real radio. Well, you know, if you're like me, and, and I know you guys have done kind of the same thing, where you podcast off of your dining room table, um, and it's out there. And the great thing about the Internet is that anybody can do it. Uh, but there's something about AM radio uh, that is just really cool, and doing it live. And one of the things that I found find is um, there's an energy that w- uh, when you do it live that you just can't replace. You can't. It, it, there's nothing like it uh, when you're doing a podcast. So uh, I, I love that energy, and I love the people listening live. And I hope uh, that all the folks who are listening right now. They continue to listen and support you and tell their friends and, t- and tell their enemies that they need to listen to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. And, uh, you know, and, and being, being a radio guy myself, when I was on hold uh, waiting for you guys, I'm listening to your commercials and I'm going, oh, commercials, <laughs> ooh. You know, <laughs> it's uh, so good for your sponsors, too, for supporting you. I, I really applaud them. Well, we, you were a big uh, help in that. You didn't get the sponsors for us, but you, we had several tele, teleconferences with you, and you you kind of gave us the secrets of, of radio and, and told us what we were doing wrong and what we needed to change, and, and you, <laughs> you really helped us uh, open our eyes to things that we never knew about that really made this show what it is today and, and make it possible that we're here every Saturday morning. Well, if if I know so much, how come I ain't rich? <laughs> Some of the wealthiest uh, people are the ones with the least amount of money, Mike. Oh, I, that is, can I write that down? Yeah, that, that's, that's yours. You can use that. <laughs> okay, great. I'm going to use it on the show today since I am on the air at 10, yeah. which means that we probably should get to business here, shouldn't we? Yeah, well, Mike, you're a backyard. Uh, you, you're, you have a background in theater, and uh, you know how to, to present the information. But how did you get into gardening and green living radio talk and, and all of that? You know, it was kind of um, an evolution. I've worked in radio my whole life, but it certainly wasn't about horticulture or agriculture. Um, But about 30 years ago, close to 30 years ago, not quite yet, um, I I got a vacation home in the Pacific Northwest uh, with my partner Kathleen. And we loved it there because it was in the rainforest and... You know, temperate uh, uh, is a temperate rainforest. There's like four of them in the whole world, uh, and one of them, of course, is along the coast. There stretches basically from the middle of Oregon all the way up to Alaska, and so there's 300 foot tall trees and ferns and lichen and moss, and it rarely gets above 80 and and rarely gets below 30, and so it's a green paradise. And after a few years there, I realized I know more about the Pacific Northwest plants than I do about the ones in Chicago where my real home is. And I said, that's crazy. Um, and so I took a master gardener course because I wanted to learn more about what was going on. Uh, and I, you know, I also wanted to grow things in, in my yard. And, and I had lived in apartments for, you know, I'm in Chicago and uh, had lived in apartments for a long time. And then we bought a house and we were able to start gardening. But even before that, one of the apartments we lived in um, had a backyard and nobody was paying attention to it. And we said to the landlord, hey, can we garden here? And they said, you know, knock yourselves out. So we kind of took it over. And uh, it's where I started to learn. And it, and it was one of those weird little spaces, a tiny, tiny little, there was a three flat and, and it got direct sun about four days a year. That was about it. And uh, so I was growing things. I learned so much about shade plants 
in that time. I, you know, I, it, it, it was kind of a, a miracle that I could grow anything at all, but it's amazing how plants adapt and, and what you can grow if you just have a little plot of land. Fantastic. Now, you live in an old house now, over 100 years old, that has lead paint that has been found in your soil. How do you garden with having the lead affect your plants, and how can other you know, people deal with the same problem? Yeah, it's, it's an issue, and, and what, uh, what you what you got to know, first of all, is if you live in an old home, there's probably uh, lead paint, you know, up until the 70s, we were using lead-based paints, um, and uh, what happens, lead uh, will, will flake off, the lead paint will flake off the house, and it'll go into the soil, and lead does not move readily in the soil. You you know, it, you can cap it, which is great, uh, and then put compost and stuff over it, and it's not going to come up through the soil. Once it's there, it's there. But if you do have it in your soil, you got to be a little bit careful about about growing things. However, over the years, since I, you know, I did this lead test, and I want to say it was a dozen years ago, and and the results, it dep- I had I took it two different. Labs, which is I think always interesting too, because you you know if you, you go to a doctor and your doctor tells you you've got a problem, what do you want? You want a second opinion. So I did the same thing with the lead test. I got this one and it said, wow, the lead is really through the roof here. And then I went to another lab, and it wasn't as high, but the ratios were exactly the same. So it told me, okay, I'm onto something here. I can tell which part of my yard has high lead content. What the exact number is, well, it, it kind of depends on how aggressive the lead test is that you're doing, and that gets into the science of it, and not, you know, the average gardener is not going to understand all the science of it. It's just good to know that if you got lead in your soil, there are various ways to deal with it. One, as I said before, is you cap it. You put a layer of clay or you put a, a, a fabric barrier over it, and then you put your compost on top of that in your soil, and you should be okay. And that's why people have raised beds uh, a lot of times. That's to deal with the lead problem. Um, but w- what I discovered that's even more important is the bioavailability of lead in plants. And I, I don't know if you guys have talked about this on your show at all, but that's kind of a new science. We don't really know how well plants take up lead. We do know that fruiting bodies tend not to, to store lead. So if you're growing tomatoes in your soil, uh, the tomato itself will not have lead in it. The fruiting, you know, or, or a raspberry or a strawberry, they tend not to have the fruiting. Uh, the fruiting bodies tend not to uh, accumulate lead. However, if you're growing carrots or beets, uh, you have to be very conscious of it. And the point is, don't eat. It, this is this sounds simple. Don't eat the soil. All right. Well, how do you not eat the soil? Well, you clean off your beets, you clean off your carrots, make sure you remove all of the soil. If you if you think you have an issue at all, uh, lettuces and spinaches, um, they're close to the ground. And, of course, as you know, when you harvest, you can get soil in there. Um, you, you, you wash it within an inch of its life if you think you've got lead in your soil, and you're probably going to be fine. So over the years, what I've discovered is it's really not about what the plant's taking up so much as it is keeping the produce clean when you eat it and 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 make sure that you wash it well and for our listeners who may think they have lead in their soil there's no hey i'm looking at the soil i i know it there's lead because of telltale signs you have to get a soil test there's no visual signs that tells you oh that soil has lead correct that's right yeah you have to get a test and that's why i i did i was actually writing a story for chicago land gardening magazine when i did this and so i said okay Let's look at my backyard. And I, I was a little bit surprised. I shouldn't have been surprised because, as you said, my house is it's like 125 years old. So I knew that there had been lead paint slapped on it many, many times. Um, and, of course, right by the house was where most of the lead was because that's where most of the paint chips had fallen off. Uh, but it can also happen along uh, parkways because of the lead we used to have in gasoline. If you're a house, you know, people say, well, I'm in the country, I, I, I don't have that issue, but you might have other issues. Uh, there might have been an orchard there and some toxic uh, elements were used uh, in, in farms and orchards in the past. You should probably get a soil test and see what you, you know, there's, there's lead and there's, um, what's the other one I'm thinking of? Um, arsenic? Uh, Arsenic, yes. Arsenic can be a problem, too. Thank you for, for 
unblocking my brain there. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you need to you need to actually do a soil test for that. It's it's like a it's a little bit over a hundred bucks or something like that, which sounds a little bit expensive for some people. But if you think you have it, it's well worth the the cost. Well, for uh, the, a few minutes we have left, Mike, you are an author. You wrote a book called Attack of the uh, Killer Asparagus. What's the book about and where can people find it? <laughs> well, as you mentioned, I do a column. I, I write for Chicago Land Gardening Magazine, uh, and now I'm in my 14th year of writing a column. And anybody who's ever read my column knows that it's, uh, well, as I say, I make stuff up and they pay me for it. <laughs> um, and it's, it's about gardening. But it's like the dystopian side of gardening. My the people uh, and plants and critters in my world are a little bit off center. Um, I try to add a little humor to things. And after I've been doing this for uh, ten or eleven years, actually about a dozen years, um, um, I decided you know let's let's put some of these in a book. And so I put uh, the best of like the first six years in the book Attack of the Killer Asparagus, which you can get at aroundtheblockpress.com, uh, aroundtheblockpress.com, or you can go to mikenovak.net uh, and take a look. Um, I think I've got it there. Boy, <laughs> now, now you're going to make me hang up and go on my own website and see if I've got the info on the book. I think I got it there. Uh, it's a couple. Of, it's been out for a couple of years, but uh, some people think it's funny. I think it's the best uh, bathroom book ever written because you read a column and then you know you can leave it and come back the next time you're in there. So um, uh, I, a lot of people like it, and I appreciate that. Well, Mike, we greatly appreciate you taking a few minutes out of your very hectic morning before you get on the radio in Chicago and join Holly and myself and our listeners to share a little bit of your garden knowledge with all of us. Thank you, Mike. I, I got to ask you a real quick question. Yeah. What do you tell people about tomatoes right now? It's pretty uh, nasty weather, isn't it? Well, we just did a segment uh, before you came on about four tips on how to plant them correctly to get the best harvest, but we're going to hold off and we're not going to plant ours. Uh, we've got them hardened off. We may put some in the ground tomorrow, but the majority is going to wait until next weekend. Good for you. Yeah, I always tell folks in Chicago, June 1st, don't, don't even bother until June 1st, but... And this has been a, the year that proves that rule, because it's been so crazy, the weather. Yeah, we may get snow in July, we just don't know. <laughs> You're right. All right, thanks, guys. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Well, thank, thank you, Mike. Mike. And we'll be right back after this with your garden questions and our garden answers. Have a gardening question? You can call into the ivorganic.com hotline at 414-444-5250. Right now. Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. Bobex is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants will not wash off and is guaranteed. Bobex deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. Bobex can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Ask for it by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more? Visit Bobex.com. B O B B. Ex.com. Eating natural and organic is not as expensive as it used to be, especially when you shop at Woodman. They have aisles full of certified organic food, from fruits and vegetables to dairy products and even meat, all at great prices. They even have a huge selection of wheat-free and gluten-free items. I can come to Woodman's and get everything I need all under one roof. My name is Alicia and I shop at Woodman's. Do you want your next raised beds to be easy, functional, and beautiful? The Embrace helps you create the garden you've always wanted. Finally, raised beds that everyone can assemble and enjoy. No tools needed. Just slide any lumber into the Embrace corner, fill with your favorite soil mix, and you're ready to plant. Made from 100% recycled steel right here in the USA. And a portion of every sale helps to build school and community gardens all across the country. Let the Embrace help you create your next raised bed. Grow Beautifully with the Embrace, available at local garden centers and online at artofthegarden.net. Hot Shen Note, 125 years of experience producing stone, ground, organic flour, and cornmeal made from premium quality whole grains. Family owned company, continual standards that are non GMO, organic at the highest safety levels, offering a wide variety of flours, pasta, baking mixes, flaxseed, and more, even kosher and gluten free options. 
found at most local grocers like Woodman's. For more information and recipes, visit HodgsonMill.com. That's H-O-D-G-S-O-N-M-I-L-L.com. Hi, I'm John Lewandowski, retail manager of Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center. Now, I'm not going to tell you about our awesome dome-grown plants, our beautiful pottery, or our 40 varieties of landscape materials. What I am going to tell you is that Blue Mills is a local, independent, family-owned garden center that truly cares about your garden or landscape project. So if you're looking for that one garden center that actually cares about you, come to Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center. We've been treating our customers like family since 1955. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. Now back to two gardeners who don't claim to know a thing about golfing. I mean, we don't golf. So we're not going to listen to podcasts about golf or watch television shows on how to golf. Joey and Holly Bear. This is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, your destination for all things gardening, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and a whole lot more, 850-some-odd videos and more getting added weekly. Well, we've got a few minutes left, 10 minutes left to the top of the hour, and that we will fill with your questions. You can call in on the iborganics.com hotline. Ivy Organic, 3-in-1 Plant Garden, naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn insects and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields pruned and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit, and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. Visit for more information, visit ivyorganics.com. You can call in at 414-444-5250. Uh, 414-444-5250 for your garden questions, as well as you can email us at twvgradio at gmail.com, or you can send us a tweet uh, at hashtag TWVG. So we had a number of questions. I didn't know if we'd have any questions this past week. By the time Monday morning came around, we had like 10 questions already come in on our social media platforms on a variety of different topics, as well as uh, we have a... I think we have a caller on the line. Yep. Yep. Uh, caller, you have a question? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. You're on the air. Yes. I'm Kevin Dershinsky, blind person. Um, Mike was in the radio, and I'm a radio, uh, radio aficionado. Uh, did he leave a number where I could reach him? If you go on MikeNovak.net... I can't. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm totally blind. Okay. Um, if, uh, Debo, if you can get his number, then we can get a hold of... Uh, we're going to hold, hold the line. Debo is going to get your information, and we will uh, get you in contact with, with Mike. Okay, thanks. Okay. So we had a number of questions come on, uh, come in the on the through a lot of social media this week. So we're going to answer a couple of them because these might be uh, important to you in your garden or will be in your garden. So the question is, my trees, my maple trees, this is a common problem, maple trees have black tar spots on the leaves. Are they okay to use as mulch? I usually burn them to prevent the spread of fungus. Uh, yes, you can use these leaves. We use them. There's there's no harm in it. And it's really a leaf that looks like a kid took a permanent marker and just dotted it all up. Right. It, it, it's usually just one spot, though. Yeah. But the thing is, is that there are ways to prevent that from your trees, but that is at the point of growth. Once that tree has that, that problem, there's really not much that you can do. You can you search it online for sure, but you can use those leaves in your garden. There is no harm in that. Right, and we use a lot of the maple leaves with those markings on them through our mulch and uh, composting pr procedures. So then the other question is, is something eats my rhubarb every year. I see it come up and it's completely We've gone. We've had a lot of rhubarb questions right. this year. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I thought the leaves were toxic. What could be eating it? It's typically something like a raccoon, um, deer, rabbit. anything, rabbit. Anything that's going to typically eat anything um, in your garden will eat your rhubarb as well. And these animals don't care if, it, if the leaves are toxic. Um, uh, chickens will gnaw on And chickens as well. will eat it too. And if you, if you do have this problem with chickens eating it, you definitely want to avoid that because that can make your chickens sick. So if you have rhubarb and your chickens are eating it or somebody's chickens are eating it, <laughs> You want to make sure you keep them away. Uh, one thing you can apply around the plants or around your grow area is Bobex. It's a natural animal repellent, and it absolutely works. We did that around some beds as the chipmunks were getting in and digging up, and the chipmunks have not been back. It doesn't wash away. It works very well. Another question is, can you grow pumpkin or uh, on your uh, house deck in... Uh, in a store-bought bag of soil, or can I grow what what vegetables can I grow in that? So what they're talking about is they're taking they're going to Blue Mel's and getting a bag of of compost or potting soil, 
setting it on the edge, cutting it open, and, and planting the seeds in. And it does work. The thing that we have done successfully for a number of years now in, in Holly's sister's backyard is we've taken a bag of certified leaf compost from Sue's, which is two cubic foot of soil, put it on the edge, cut the side open, and then pour another two cubic foot bag of soil in it. So we have a bag on its edge that has four cubic foot of soil in it. And we've grown, last year we grew 45 pounds worth of pumpkins out of it. Uh, you can do this, uh, what people will do this with lettuce, radishes, they'll lay it flat and cut the, the top open uh, like a zipper and, and bring it back. You can do a lot of things, but you want to have make sure you have a, um, enough soil in it. And that's why we add uh, com- com- combine four cubic foot of soil in the uh, grow bag. And you don't and have to have a container. The, right. the punch are some holes in the bottom of it, and you can grow stuff out of it, tomatoes, peppers, eggplant. But you want to have enough soil that it doesn't dry out. And you want to have, and I recommend compost because compost contains a lot of nutrients. And some of the store-bought fur li- or some of the store-bought potting soil is one extremely dry, and two doesn't really re- t- uh, contain much nutrients at all in the, uh, the 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 soil or the the, the potting mix. So you want something that's going to feed your plants because pumpkins are extremely heavy feeders. And other ones are not nearly, but that's something that can be done. It does work very well. All right. So we have a question asking about the crop rotation guides on Pinterest. Pinterest is a very lovely thing. There's You can get a lot of information. You can do a lot of searches. However, it's just like anything on the Internet. You want to make sure that you have some good research behind it. I mean, obviously, if you just get a recipe from there, that's fine. But when it comes to something like a crop rotation guide, your best your best uh, idea is to get it from a university extension office or the Farmer's Almanac. Those are two great resources. Yeah, just because it looks pretty in a picture on Pinterest doesn't mean it we, actually works. We've all seen Pinterest fails. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and they are very humorous. But when it comes to gardening, we don't want you to fail. We want you to succeed the first time so you, so it's, it's worth the – so you get something out of it. All right, so we have a question here from my friend Melissa. I've known Melissa for a very long time um, since I think we were in elementary school together. So she wants to know um, if there's a good all-natural way to prevent weeds in her garden. Uh, usually it gets under, run by weeds. She puts compost in every year. They wrote it till, and then she wants to know how to prevent that. Okay, uh, before we get to that question, okay. we do have a question on the IVOrganics.com hotline. Caller, you have a question? Hi, I would like to know, how do I prevent the bugs from eating up my hostas? Bugs preventing eating your hostas. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you know what kind of bugs or what, uh, can you describe what those bugs may look like? I don't know what they look like. I mean, they eat holes. In oh, them. okay, they're, they're eating holes in your hostas, okay. Yeah. Um, so there's a number, there could be a, uh, could be a number of uh, bugs here. Holly's got the information. It's typically, typically going to be slugs or snails. Okay. Uh, slugs would be more, well, I've seen, I really haven't seen the slugs in, in Wisconsin, or the, the snails. The slugs uh, I've seen, we've had slugs in our garden. So there's a couple of things in which you can do to detour slugs from eating your, your hostas there. Uh, you can take a cup of, uh, a party cup or some type of dish and mm-hmm. bury it soil level in the ground around your plant and put a hopsy beer in it. And those uh, slugs are attracted by that hop smell and they will nosedive into that container and they will drown thinking uh, it's a very nice uh, thing to, to get into. Um, okay. That works. We killed hundreds of slugs last year in our, in our front yard garden uh, with that particular method. Uh, by putting a container in the ground, filling it with beer uh, that has a hop smell to it, and, and they can they come in that way. Other things you can do? You also, uh, nematodes could also, which are microscop- microscopic roundworms, and those okay. can eat your plants. If that is the case, you could, if you don't want to use any chemicals, you could just destroy the plants, or you could make sure you're watering at the base of the plants, those little worms uh, come around because of too much moisture. And then for slugs, you can also put coffee grounds around the base of your plants. Slugs don't like that. It's it's uh, abrasive. abrasive to their okay. their bottoms or their bottom part of their body. And so they're going to avoid those coffee grounds. Another question. Yes. It's the same for cabbage. I know slugs eat the cabbage. Uh, diet tomatoes or smells. Uh, right. Diet tomatoes earth is something we would recommend applying um to the cabbage plants uh, to 
that they eat that. It's a uh, fossilized remains of ancient uh, plant life, and it actually tears them up from the inside out. Um, it's a terrible process, but it works very well okay. in protecting the cabbages. Um, I'm going to note that down. I'm going to put. Uh, if you tune in next week, we'll get you some more information on that cabbage situation uh, okay. to help you out there. Thank you very much for your uh, help. Uh, And we'll hold off on that question about weeds next week because that sound means the show's just about over. And the show is brought to you by the great companies in which pay the bills that allow us to be here each and every week. Nassal Kabucha is the executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show. Nassal is made in Wisconsin with local tea and natural herbs. Look for it in the refrigerator aisle at your local grocer. If you don't see it, ask for it because if it's not Nassal Kombucha, it's not kombucha. Find out more at nassala.com. Great company and great companies throughout the program. Tune in next week. Programming note, six uncommon vegetables and fruits that we're growing in our garden that you can grow in yours here in Milwaukee, as well as cucumbers. We're going to talk all about cucumbers and what you need to do to grow successfully, as well as the plant doctor be with us, our guest, Melinda Myers, who is a 20-year radio host veteran as well as author, and uh, she's got several DVDs out there. So until next week, I'm Holly Baird. And I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden.